reading for this third Sunday of Easter is from the Acts of the Apostles, the ninth chapter, beginning with the first verse. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were open, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now, there was a disciple of Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul, for behold, he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, and here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed from and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized, and taking food, he was strengthened. For some days he was with the disciples at Damascus. And immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon this name? And has he not come here for this purpose, to bring them bound before the chief priests? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. Here ends the first reading. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The second reading for this morning is from the Revelation to St. John, the fifth chapter, beginning with the eighth verse. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp, and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God, from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain 
to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. That I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Here ends the reading of the second lesson. Who 
saved by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And God's children say, Amen. In today's first reading, we heard of one of the greatest conversion stories in the Bible. How Saul was an enemy of God. He thought he was doing God's will by persecuting Christians. And yet, remember what Jesus said to him when he revealed himself to Saul? He said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You see, Saul thought he had the faith, but he didn't because he didn't know who Jesus was. He didn't believe that Jesus was the Christ, that is, the Savior, the Messiah, the one who has redeemed the world through his own sacrificed body and blood. And so his eyes were blinded. He couldn't see Jesus for who he was because he didn't believe. In fact, he would have gone on unbelieving and be lost and condemned to hell forever if Jesus hadn't come to him. And how did Jesus come to him? In a vision, but by speaking. He said, Lord, or I mean, he said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You see, this is how Jesus comes to us. We who were born sinful and unclean, enemies of God, St. Paul says, each and every one of us need to have Jesus come to us. And how does he do it? Through the word, through his speaking. When you hear about Jesus, even in stories like this, because just as it was for Saul, so it is for us. Having heard and believed and been baptized in his name, he has made us a new creation. He has changed us from being enemies of God to children of God. Just like Jesus spoke to his disciples on the shores of Galilee. My children, you see, that's who you are, children of God, by grace, through faith in Jesus, from his holy word, which has come to you. Because that's how the Holy Spirit works faith in you, through the word. You know, we too, without Christ, would be blind, deaf, dumb, lost eternally. But because Jesus has opened our eyes to believe in him, we have eternal life, forgiveness, and salvation. What a wonderful thing the Lord has done for us as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Father in heaven, we give thanks to you for your word, which works faith, which brings us from death to life, from sin to salvation, from blindness to seeing you for who you are, our Savior and Redeemer. We know, Lord, without your word, we would be lost eternally. But thanks be to God, you come to us, you seek us out even when we would run away, and you fill us with your Holy Spirit through your holy word. We pray that we would never wander off, fall prey to the devil and his false teaching, but rather always remain faithful to the word which shows us our salvation in Jesus Christ alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you, from God our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. On that horrible Passover, just a few weeks before, the Lord had been crucified, died, and was buried, just as we confess in the creeds. But looking back, it was just as he had said. Just as as the prophets had foretold, just as the Holy Scriptures had revealed, going clear back to Moses and the very beginning, the Lord had descended into hell, defeating death and the devil, just as it had been told to Adam and Eve. On the third day, just as the Lord had promised, he had risen from the dead. Again, just as he had said all along. The empty tomb, the discarded burial claws, he appeared behind locked doors, the holes of the nails still in his hands, even the wound in his side, all proved to the disciples that the Lord still lived. The disciples had seen and heard and believed. 
even Thomas, even Peter, who had denied the Lord three times, saying he didn't know the man and he was no disciple. He now believed. And yet, it is easy to get impatient with the Lord. It is easy to have doubts, even for us, who have Moses and the prophets and the eyewitnesses of the apostles themselves. Sometimes we, too, forget God's words and find it easier to go back to what we are most comfortable with when we are confused and uncertain. And so the disciples had gone back to fishing. The Lord had told them that he would meet them in Galilee, that he would go there before them. That's where the Lord had found them in the first place. It was there that he first called them to be his disciples and follow him. So, waiting for the Lord, heeding his word, and yet not sure what to do next, it seems that the disciples may have forgotten the one important thing that the Lord had told them in the beginning. That he was going to make them fishers of men. Because at least for now, as we heard in the Gospel reading, they've gone back to their old vocations. So, our Lord comes to them, just as he had promised. Granted, the Lord had told them that he would send them out into the world, but first Jesus must come and remind his disciples of their mission and their calling. He must assure them, first and foremost, that they have been forgiven their sins and their lack of faith. Especially Peter. Because just as it was for the disciples, so it is for us. You see, how long does it take you to forget what you have heard here today when you walk out those doors in a few minutes? How soon does it take us for the things of this world to overshadow what the Lord has done and spoken to us? as we have sat here in His presence. How soon do we, too, forget what happens here and go back to the ways of the world, forgetting what God has done for us and how we should be treating others? In fact, how many of us don't even think about God's Word until we sit back down in these pews a week from the day? How many of us, during the week, when things are going badly, Instead of calling upon the Lord's name as we should, instead, when we get hurt or angry, call upon it in the wrong way. Not asking Him to be with us in every trouble, pray, praising, and giving thanks to Him, but instead cursing His name. Failing to call upon Him. But thankfully, just as it was for them, so it is for us. The Lord tenderly refers to His disciples as children. Certainly not a term that grown men would expect to hear from a stranger on the street, or in this case, standing on the shore directing their fishing. And yet, when the Lord speaks the words, it is a reminder that even though they have not always acted as the men he has called them to be, he still loves them as his own. And we too should be comforted by how the Lord restores Peter and even the other disciples. Because after all, we too are often weak and easily distracted by both the good and the bad things that happen to us in our daily lives. Like the disciples, when we feel strong and on top of the world, we are tempted to forget from whom all blessings flow. And then when things that go bad in our lives, we're tempted to forget the trustworthy words of the Lord and go back to our old ways, thinking that it's only by our strength and abilities which we will solve our problems, rather than turning to the Lord in prayer and trust in Him. After all, how many people over the ages have simply given up on the Christian faith and praying because they think it simply doesn't work? But what's the real problem? Has the Lord not heard our prayers? Has He ignored them? Of course, the answer is no. The Lord promises to hear the prayers of His people. That's why He gives us the Lord's Prayer and tells us to come to Him. That's why we offer our prayers here on Sunday and throughout the week as we pray to the Lord at whatever time He places things upon our hearts. But what we must remember when it comes to prayer in the Lord's presence, that the Lord does not necessarily answer our prayers or come to us in the way that we want. 
want or expect. He comes to us in His way and according to His word, His will, <coughs> excuse me, and yes, His timing. So it gives us strength as we wait for the Lord, is to remember that He has promised that He never will leave nor forsake us, that He is always present for us whenever we need Him, whether we think we need Him or not. And just like the disciples, when they had turned back to fishing, as they waited for his appearing, we must remember that he is always there waiting for us. So, he keeps his promises. The Lord sought out his disciples. They did not come to him on their own, so he comes to them. And when they saw him and recognized him, they rejoiced. For in his appearing to them, and in the miraculous bunch of fish which he provides, he goes on to feed them. He shows them that he has not forsaken them, abandoned them, was not angry with them, but was still caring for and providing for them. That they were forgiven and restored, despite what happened on that Passover a few weeks before. But he also reminded them of their callings, their callings as their, and their true vocation as his disciples. They were not to go back to the old ways of living, for he had made new men out of them. And of course, we can see the parallel for us as well. The Lord has changed us through his word and through the waters of holy baptism. He's made us a new creation, bringing us from death to life, from blindness to faith. And if that's true, then we can't go back to the old way of living. In other words, the way of the world is not our ways. Do we want anyone to fall away from and leave the church once they have been fed by Christ and go back to the ways of the world? Of course, the answer is no. But the only way to remain with the Lord is to remain where he promises to come and be with you and feed you and continue to teach you and sustain you in your faith, just as he did the disciples. Because again, it is often easy for us to justify doing something else, work or play, going our own way rather than the Lord's. But just like the disciples whose nets came back empty on their own, that is ultimately what happens to those who try to live their lives away from Christ. They end up empty and often full of heartache and despair. And for those who do not believe, who reject his word and the forgiveness he offers so freely, that only eternal damnation and judgment awaits. But just like John, who recognized Jesus first, who pointed him out to the others, saying, It is the Lord, we too must constantly be pointed back to where our Lord is to be found. Even Saul who would eventually be so changed by the risen Lord that he would change his name to Paul, did not seek Jesus, at least not to worship him. Rather, he wanted to destroy the church, offended and angry with Christ, until the Lord finally had the scales of unbelief removed from his eyes as the Holy Spirit filled him with the truth that Jesus is the Son of God and there is salvation to be found in no one else. And in that good news, that the one who had been crucified still lived, Saul grew in strength. Because Saul finally understood that he who had once been an enemy of the Lord had been given the most precious of gifts, forgiveness. Forgiven by the very Jesus whom he would see lost and dead. Because that Jesus still lived. And by faith in that message, Saul finally understood the eternal life and salvation that could only be found in the one who died for the sins of the world and yet who still lived. Of course, that message has not changed. That is still the message that justifies. That you have been declared righteous on account of what Christ has done for you. And then, this is what was recorded to Saul after he was baptized. He took food and ate, and in his eating, he was also strengthened. What an amazing thing to consider that our Lord constantly connects what he does for our salvation with a meal. To this day, our Lord continues to reveal himself as he did. Just as he did all his fed his disciples and his people, he fed Israel with the desert with man and God from heaven. He fed the multitude with a miraculous meal made from five loaves and two fish. 
In a similar way, he revealed himself to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus when they recognized him in the breaking of the bread as they sat down to a meal with the Lord. Jesus continues to feed the children of God with the very bread of life, a meal that he has prepared for your salvation. For the words which flow from the lips of the prophets and the pens of the apostles are the very words of eternal life, which Peter himself verified when he correctly proclaimed, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Not the word of man, but the word of God himself revealed and given to the apostles and now to us. For there is salvation to be found in no one else. And why would we even consider it? Apart from Christ, you can do nothing, and you are left back under works and the law. But with Christ, you have been given everything. For that's the way it is with the law of the gospel. The law, our good works, they demand everything and give nothing. But the gospel, which is what God does for us, gives everything and demands nothing of us. How can we starve ourselves spiritually from the word of God when we've had such truths revealed to us? Because... Just as it was for the disciples then, the Lord invites you this morning and every day to eat the meal he provides. He feeds you with his own words in your daily devotions. He comes to you with his word in the daily prayer offices of matins and vespers. He offers you the meal of his own body and blood in the divine service this Sunday. The Lord invites all who believe his words to come and eat the meal which he has prepared for you, saying, Come, have breakfast with me. Feast with me in the food I provide, given to you by my own hands, the very bread of life. Feast on me in my word, the Lord says, which is the food for your salvation. Therefore, what a blessing that during this time of Easter, we can be reminded of all that the Lord does in coming and calling us back. Reminding us of how he still feeds us, how he continues to sustain us. How through his being risen from the dead and revealing himself alive to his disciples, he has done the same for us. And not us alone, but to all the saints in heaven on earth who have ever lived and died believing in Christ. And for that we rejoice at the victory of the Lamb of God over sin, death, and the power of the devil. And we find our comfort in the very same Lord who died still lives. Because he has been raised from the dead. Just as the disciples saw and ate and believed, just as Saul heard and believed, just as Peter, who denied the Lord three times, was restored and forgiven three times over. For John, who wrote down these words of the Lord's appearing to his disciples on the beach and the amazing catch of fish, has also given us a glimpse of the heavenly praise which is offered to Christ for all that he has done in saving his people. And even in the fact that an explicit number was mentioned, 153 fish. Now that's a bit of a mystery, except for this. There is a total number of people who will be saved. The elect, the chosen of God. It's a reminder that in that catch of fish, the apostles and their mission will be completed one day. That the fish will that is, all the believers will be brought in safely to shore, that is, to God's heavenly kingdom. We're also reminded of that this morning as well. That John, or that John has received that revelation from the Lord, that it is for all people in all times and places. A revelation for the church then and the church today, so that we too might be strengthened in our times of weakness and doubt, when sin, death, and the devil assaults us, we too are reminded of the vision that was given to John as we wait for the Lord's appearing to us. We wait for his glorious return. And as we wait, the Lord sustains us. And we remember the words of John in the Revelation. Then I looked, and I heard around the throne of the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who is slain. To receive power, wealth, and wisdom, and might, and honor, and glory, and blessing. And every creature in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth, and in the sea, and all that is in them, say to him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb, honor, blessing, and glory, and might forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worship. And thanks be 
the God. When we gather here at his birth, receive the sacrament, we too sing our praises to the Lord who has already done and will continue to do this morning. Saying amen with all the saints of heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and